Okay, so here we are. So add to cart buttons. They're really not complicated, except when we start to do custom grids. And if you followed my previous tutorial about linked products, if you haven't, I'll link it later on when it's more contextual. But yeah, add to cart buttons are pretty blim and simple. But as soon as you add a custom grid or you want to do something like that, you've got a few more steps that you need to do in order to hack around it and trick it to work. So yeah, so just for people who may or may not know, add to cart buttons, as I said previously already, now three times are pretty blim and simple. And that's because they are. If you've created a collection list wrapper and you've linked it to products, literally all you have to do is drop in a add to cart button into your hierarchy. So blah, blah, and it works. Now, obviously you can style this, you can hide things, change the add to cart text, and yeah, it will just convert seamlessly out the box and then you're good to go. So add to cart button, simple stuff, finished. All right, so now what we're gonna do is add an add to cart button to our linked products or shop the look products collection grid that we're driving through a Shopify meter field. So. We're not using a collection wrapper at all. We've literally just created a skeleton framework. And if you follow this tutorial before, I'm gonna link it now, or you wouldn't having a similar structure to this. And the one caveat and one change that we need to make, and if you have followed the previous tutorial, you would have done this already, so good, good, good to go. But basically what we've done is we've created a liquid tag and we're gonna assign a, a object to it. And we say, for assign linked products, and we've given it a meter field value. Remember that dot value. And then what you're doing is you're iterating through that with a for loop, which is basically just saying, get those objects and just spit them out for me. And where I've changed this from the previous tutorial is I've got linked products in linked products. And what you need to do is what was happening in the previous thing is we have to call it just a product. Because basically what happens when we add an add to cart button and the various different things, we have to actually tell or trick, should we say, the, the, the configuration tool to think that these are actually being presented as product objects. So that then the add to cart button and the way that it works in the code and behind the scenes all works seamlessly and it links everything up for you without having to do any custom Ajax or any funny daddy stuff. Okay, so just to clarify there, so you're just making sure that you have um, product. And if you have called this for loop, like Hujima flips or whatever it is that you've called it in here, this has to be product and it has to be reflected everywhere. So if I look at this like card title, for instance, you'll see here it says product.title and then it's product.url. So if I was, if I had done this differently, these would have been called something like uh, linked product, for instance. And all I need to now do is just go and just get rid of the linked so that it says this is a product dot dot title. And you do that through all of the various different things that you've you've referenced it. Uh, so fair enough. So now you, what you would do is you would add your add to cart button and you'd tweak it and change it as you want. But there's other elements in here that will that will change automatically that uh, you, you would might want to want. You might want your SKU to kind of be there and as you change through your different options, change the SKU and obviously price is relatively handy to know. So we're gonna add those now and I'll have these copy and pasteable below in the, in the description. So we just need to add two text blocks, uh, another one, all right. And well, this one will be our price. So we'll just go one, two, three, four. And this will be our SKU. Dial to taste as usual. This is just the simple thing just to kind of get the point across. And now we need to add in our uh, liquid objects, custom attributes. Again, I'm gonna link these below. So the first one's gonna be liquid object. And we want it to be uh, product.price. And we need to give it a filter because we need to tell Shopify that this is a money object, otherwise it'll just look like a, a string of numbers. Uh, so we space bar, I mean to say money. Make sure there's just one space, not two. Okay, so that's that one done. Okay, so next one is SKU, you wanna add the object stuff to it as well. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this because it's easier. So look for it in the description below. And all we need to do is go again, liquid object. Uh, make sure you spell it correctly and then just pop it in here. And basically all it's saying is product selected or first available variant SKU. And uh, 
it needs it in that particular structure because we're trying to mirror the structure of what would happen when we did this through the like what we did on the homepage with the, just the collection side of things. Right, so now we think we're there. But the thing is, we want these to be AJAX-enabled objects. So we want, when you this when you select a different variant, we want it to be able to update those particular things. So we need to, again, mirror some things that happen on the back-end code type of things once this is converted. And we need to add things called data commerce type. Uh, again, I'm going to copy and paste these because it's easy and I'm going to display them here, but they cannot... It cannot be a spelling mistake because it won't work. And I don't feel like re redoing this tutorial because I've put an extra R somewhere. Okay, so anyway, all right, so first first one's first. So let's, we'll choose the, the price again. And then we're going to just add another custom attribute. And we're going to say data commerce type. And it's going to be variation price. But done, okay. Now for SKU, so the same thing, we're just going to add another custom attribute. We're just going to plop in there, data commerce type in the name. And just like the price, we're going to say variation SKU. All right. So that's kind of done. But what we need to do now is we have to, again, keep tricking the, the add to cart functionality. Because what actually happens, and this is where if you were... One of the first people to watch this, this tutorial that I did previously, but now I'm now redoing it because there was this particular bug. What was happening was when you selected one of these, if it was the last item in the link product, it wasn't exiting the, the should we say, the loop correctly from an Ajax point of view. So when I selected that, it was actually changing the variables and stuff like that in the main product, which are these over here. So if you had SKU and price, it was updating these, which was not intended. So, and that was going to cause issues because then when you started adding cart here, it would add that product there. But then when you added this one here, it would add the last product in this list and it was getting quite confusing. But thank you for you to the awesome team at Udesley that pointed me in the right direction. Uh, so basically what was happening was it was missing one, one class that the converter looks at as immediate kind of like stop. And it says, okay, fine. So just contain it within, just contain those Ajax events within that particular product card. And that was a class called w-dyn-item. It was the only thing it was missing. Now you think, okay, cool. So we just need to go and just, I'm just going to copy that. And we're going to go to the product card. And then if I just plop w-dyn in there and I get job done. Kind of, but then we step into one additional issue, which the problem is, is that when you run through this conversion process and you export the code, the converter thinks, oh, something's a bit wrong here. It's using a class that I need. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to underscore it. So you get uh, ending a, a class that looks like that. And now the problem there is that it will break again. So what we need to do is just add the underscore class for ourselves. Say, yep, we're all good to go. And then what we're going to do is use a little bit of jQuery. Very, very simple. Again, it's going to be linked below. If you follow this class structure, you'll be good to go. We'll paste it into our custom code just before the body. And when the when the page loads, it will just hot swap out that class with the correct version. So now the cool thing is, is when you place any code and then these little areas in over here, like the before closing body tag, this actually happens before anything that Udesley does. So we're not going to get a, a compilation kind of error because of you know, mistimed scripts, for instance. So whatever we do on here, it's gonna happen before that Ajax event triggers. So it means that when we hot swap that class out, it's gonna see no issues. All right, so what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna actually copy and paste the script again, and it's, and it's gonna be below. So look for the script there. Uh, and basically all we're doing is we are looking for this underscore WDYN item. Then we're saying we're gonna add the class WDYNs without the underscore, and then we're gonna remove the class with the underscore. Simple. So that will run through and we're then good to go. Okay, cool. So that's that. So now what it'll do is it will loop through our meter field. It's going to spit everything out. Our price is going to change when we click it. Our SKU is going to change when we click the the, the button. It's going, then it's going to escape the Ajax event stuff so that we don't update the master product. Woo, job done. Cool. So let's just publish and we'll export that and I'll see you once I've uh, published it on... Uh, Shopify. Okay, so there we are. So it's all installed. Let's have a look at how it's working. 
All right, so if we go down here, we will say add to cart. And we've got awesomeness, number one, blue, black, all job done. So that Ajax enabled cart structure is working, which we don't have to hack or do anything funny with. It all just works. And now if we go to this particular product and we will see here, if we got awesomeness, it's all working. And if I was to add that one there, it's working as we need to. I'm just gonna remove these now so you can just see that we're doing it correctly. Scroll down here, you can see we've got different SKUs and you can see here I've labeled them one, two, three, and four. And then you've got a price of two, 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 three, 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 four, 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 whatever just so that I knew that this was working 100% because that was very irritating. All right, so we're just gonna add here, we're gonna see that it, the SKU is a is a updating as we want. And if I add that one to the cart, and we can see it's been added correctly. It's the gray one, it's added and it's $3.10. So everything's coming across correctly. And I can't add this one because there is no stock on it. So, woohoo, finally. Done. Urgh. That irritated me a bit. So apologies if you saw this video before and I caused some confusion. I'll always take it down if you if you guys um, spot an issue. So please let me know because I, it's very important to me that these things help and not cause any issues. So yeah, that's it. So please like, share and subscribe. Getting so close to that 1000 mark and it really make, means a lot to me. Uh, I'm putting a lot more effort behind these videos and I'm hoping to do a huge amount more. And yeah, that's it. And I'll see you in the next one. Catch you later. Bye.